Hey everyone, I apologize for not uploading a video in quite some time, but today's video is an update video on the residential REITs. I plan to do these update videos every year or two, just so we can see how companies are doing, and if we're still investing into the best companies out there. Last year, when I went over the residential REITs, I went over 7 companies. Since then, 2 of them have been bought out, and we'll be going over which one shortly in this video. The remaining 5 companies I'll be going over in more details, and we'll picking out which ones I think are the best. But of course, these are just my own personal opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, so please do your own due diligence before investing. Also, before we begin, if you find this video informing or if you learned something valuable from this video, I would really appreciate if you like and share this video. It really helps me and this channel out. I would also like to mention, if there are any other Canadian residential REITs out there that I have missed, please let me know in the comment section below so I can include it in my next update so we can all benefit from it. First, I would like to go over the two REITs that have been acquired. First is Pure Multifamily REIT, which was acquired by Cortland last year in July of 2019 in an all-cash deal worth about $1.2 billion USD. Next was Northview Apartment REIT, which was acquired by Starlight and Kingset, also in an all-cash deal worth about $4.8 billion back in February of 2020. So the five companies that we'll be looking at today will be Canadian Apartment, Killam Apartment, Interrent, Boardwalk, and Morgard Residential REIT. I have listed them in order of market cap and by far Canadian Apartment is the largest. They have all reported a second quarterly earnings report and from the looks of it, we don't see much growth compared to Q1. It's been fairly flat, but some of them have been doing better than others. With Canadian Apartment, we see a big hit in revenue growth, but still some growth, but their funds from operation has taken a bigger hit. Killam Apartment on the other hand, has been one of the ones that has been doing better compared to the group. Yes, we do notice that their growth has slowed down a bit, but not quite as significant as the others. When we take a look into rent, we pretty much see no growth at all over the last several quarters. And if you compare the funds from operation from last year to this year, you notice it is higher, but the funds per share has gone down, and that's due to the new shares they have issued. With Boardwalk, we don't see much revenue growth over the last several quarters, but they have been growing the funds from operations nicely during this pandemic. And on top of that, Boardwalk is the only one that has kept their shares outstanding fairly flat during this time. Hence why we see a nice fund per share growth as well. And lastly, with Morgard, their revenue has been growing, slimming with their funds from operations, but their funds for sure, not quite as much. And again, that's probably due to the large number of shares they have issued out. So overall, it looks like Killam is doing the best during this time. But Boardwalk is interesting as well. Since they are distributing a smaller portion of their earnings, they haven't had the need to raise as much capital as the others. Another thing I would like to mention is instead of basing it off their PE ratio, I would base it off their funds from operation or FFO, and from this metric, we can see that Interrent is by far the most expensive, followed by Canadian Apartment. But we'll just have to see how they're doing every quarter and see how they are recovering, because we do see some growth in companies like Killam, but majority of them has been fairly flat. But at least even if the growth is still flat, they're at least still holding out and the dividends should still be safe and hopefully as the economy recovers, so will they. But one thing I would like to emphasize is your debt, because during times like these, we want a company that's well capitalized to survive this pandemic. And based on their size, I would say Interrent has the best debt ratio relative to the assets and size, followed closely by Canadian Apartment. Then next up would be Killam and Boardwalk, then followed closely by Morgard, which has the most debt relative to their assets and size. I just want to emphasize that Interrent and Canadian Apartment debt to asset ratio is much better than the other three. When we take a look at their yearly revenue, we can see them all growing the revenues nicely, with a small exception of Boardwalk for the past over years. But now it comes down to the question, which one is growing the revenue the fastest? So I drew out a couple of trend lines, and from them we can see that Canadian Apartment by far is growing the revenues the fastest, followed by Morgard. But we can see that Morgard is starting to lose some steam, as the growth is not quite as significant as the earlier years. Killam and Interrent both have a similar growth, and are both growing faster than their averages. Again, when we look at their funds from operation, we see a similar trend to their yearly revenue, which is exactly what we should expect to see. Again, with their yearly revenue, Canadian Apartment by far is growing the funds from operations the fastest, then followed by Morgard and Boardwalk. But in the past couple of years, their growth has been below their averages. Killam and Interrent may be growing slower than Morgard and Boardwalk when we are looking at their averages, but Killam and Interrent has been growing faster than their averages, which over time will bring their averages up. So that is a worthy note to keep note of. I would also like to say that yes, this is an important chart to look at, but I wouldn't put a big emphasis on this chart alone because another really important chart I feel is their funds from operations per share. Because they could be issuing a lot of shares to fund this growth, which isn't very beneficial for the current stockholders, 
but when we look at their funds from operations per share, it factors in the number of shares they have outstanding. When we look at their funds from operation per share growth, you'll be surprised to find Boardwalk at the top this time. So that tells us even though the Canadian Parliament has been on top for revenue and funds from operation growth, that growth has been fueled by issuing loads of new shares, which dilutes the existing shareholders. And they're not even in second place when it comes to funds from operation per share growth. They're more like tied for third place. But again, the top two is held by Boardwalk and Morgard. But they both have been growing below their averages for the past couple years, and looks like they are plateauing. Killam and Canadian Apartment have a similar growth to each other, but we can see that Canadian Apartment has been picking up steam in the past several years, where Killam has just been slowly chugging along. The same with Interrent as they have been dead on their historical averages, which is not a bad thing, it's perfectly fine, we at least know that they are growing and is very predictable. Next up, let's take a look at the number of shares outstanding, and from first glance we can clearly see how they have been funding their growth. The number of shares outstanding for Canadian Apartment, Interrent, and Killam has really skyrocketed over the decades. When we look at the trends, we can see that by far Interrent and Canadian Parliament is at the top with issuing tons of new shares to fund their growth, followed shortly by Killam, which has also issued a massive number of new shares as well. And those three have been issuing even more than their averages in the past over years. The only one which has been retiring more shares than they have been issuing is Boardwalk. It's not a significant amount to go bragging about, but I would consider it more flat than anything else. And if you recall the companies with a lot of debt, guess which two are at the bottom again. If you guess Morgard and Boardwalk, you're correct. And this makes total sense. Instead of issuing new shares to fund their growth, they've been taking on a lot more debt to fund their growth. And I feel you have to find a balance between the two. You want a strong balance sheet with minimal debt, but by issuing so many new shares, you are diluting existing shareholders. Next, let's take a look at their profit margins. Of course, this is an accurate depiction of the actual profit margins as I'm just basing this off their cash flow. But this should give us a very general idea at least, I just wouldn't put too much emphasis on this. We got a couple outlier points, so if we were to take a closer look. Right off the bat, we can see that Canadian Apartment, Interrent, and Killam has been trending up, which is great. But as a side note, they were also the ones issuing a lots of new shares. I don't know if there's a relationship between the two. I can sort of see an argument for it, because if you're raising capital through offering new shares, you don't need to borrow as much capital, which would equate to less interest payments, which would boost profit margins, but by how much those would affect it, I'm not sure. When it comes to Boardwalk, we can see they had a pretty big hit on the profit margins, which matches up with when their revenues got hit. Now onto their yearly dividends, but one thing you should take a note of is that Boardwalk has paid out a lot of special one-time dividends, which makes it look like they have cut their dividends many times in the past, but if we were to factor out the special dividends, we can see that in reality, they have only cut their dividends once, back in 2018, but it was a big dividend cut. But in general, their dividend growth among all the REITs has been very low. But it looks like Canadian Parliament does have the best trend among them. When we look at the actual dividend growth over the years, we can see that they're all fairly low, which is expected for REITs since all the growth is usually funded by debt or issuing new shares. When we take a look at their annualized dividend growth, the numbers doesn't look so bad. Of course, we don't see stellar dividend growth, but they are growing around 3% a year, with a few exceptions like Interrent, which has been growing around 7 to 8%, but I expect it to slow down over time, probably not right away. And Boardwalk's numbers may look really bad, but that's just because of the massive dividend cut they did back in 2018. But we'll take a look at their yearly dividend growth. We can see that Boardwalk has been all over the place, where Canadian Parliament, Killam, and Morgard has been fairly consistent over the years. Interrent has some excellent dividend growth, and from the chart, it looks like it's not slowing down yet. Of course, after looking at their dividends, we're going to take a look at their payout ratio over the years. First, we'll notice one big outlier point in Interrent, but if we were to ignore that, we can see that they're all targeting around a similar payout ratio, around 60 to 70% range. Interrent has performed the best the past five years, with Canadian Parliament and Killam having a very similar performance, followed shortly by Morgard. But overall, they have a similar performance to each other. The only outlier is Boardwalk, which has not been performing well the last several years. When we take a look at their annualized return, they all look terrible, but that's because of the COVID, which has caused them all to drop significantly this year, with Killam dropping at just under 10%, Canadian Apartment around 15%, and then we got more Garden Interment just under 20%, and lastly, Boardwalk around 35%. But if we were to take a look at their yearly return, we would see that Canadian Apartment, Killam, and Morgard has done well over the past decade. If we were to ignore this year, Interment has had some excellent returns over the past decade as well, but has been more volatile and Boardwalk just hasn't been doing too well, 
mostly with negative returns in the past decade. So in my personal opinion, which ones do I like? First, I would like to compare two REITs that are trading at a premium compared to the rest, and that is Canadian Apartment and Interrent. If you recall the trading price to funds from operation ratio, is both in the 20s which is much higher than the other three. But out of these two, which one do I like more? I'm personally leaning more towards Canadian Apartment because they are growing the revenues faster. Yes, they are both growing the revenues above their averages, but Canadian Apartment is just growing theirs at a faster rate, and more recently, much higher than the averages. When it comes to their funds from operation per share, again, we see Canadian Apartment on top again, and for the same reasoning, Interim has been growing steadily and dead on their averages, where Canadian Apartment is growing at a slightly faster rate and above the average. When we take a look at their dividend growth, yes, Interim comes on top, but if you recall, they both have a very similar payout ratio. But you got to remember, in order to continue that dividend growth with a similar payout ratio, they will have to grow their funds from operation per share. And we know that Canadian Apartment has been growing their funds from operation per share faster, so I expect the difference between them to start narrowing over the years unless they invigorate it with new growth. Don't get me wrong, I think they're both good picks, but I would personally myself lean more towards Canadian Apartment based on the numbers. Next, if we would take a look at Killam and Interrent, when it comes to revenue, Killam is growing faster, but more recently, Interrent has picked up the pace faster than Killam, so they do have the potential to maybe beat Killam in the future. If we compare the funds from operation per share, it looks like Killam is growing faster, but we can see a very rapid growth between 2003 to 2005, and I would like to remove those three points and see how fast they've been growing after 2005. And now we can see the interrent on top if we were to factor out the initial rapid growth period which more closely represent how fast they're growing now. But one positive note is now that they are growing above the average but overall I would say that they're fairly tied to each other and lastly when we compare the analyzed dividend growth we see a similar situation as with Canadian Apartment and Killam as in that in order to grow their dividends they have to grow the funds from operation per share and therefore I would expect the difference to narrow in the future as well. But one interesting point is that Killam is priced much lower than Interrent, at a trading price to funds from operation ratio of around 17 compared to Interrent's 26, and therefore we get a much more attractive yield at around 4%, but they do have quite a bit more debt than Interrent. Lastly, let's compare Bulwark and Morgard, both in a lot of debt, with Morgard in a little more relative to its size. First, when it comes to Bulwark's revenue and funds from operation per share, we see an initial ramp up. So first, I would like to remove those few points to get a clear idea of how fast they're growing the revenues more recently. And from that, we can see the Morgard on top when it comes to revenue growth, but behind when it comes to funds from operation. And the debt probably has something to do with that. If you recall, Bulwark slashed their dividend big time back in 2018, which is why we're seeing such a terrible annualized dividend growth from Bulwark. But one thing I would like to note is that their payout ratio is around 40%, with a decent yield around 3.3%. So they do have quite some room to grow their dividend, and we should see a similar yield to Morgard if they paid a similar payout ratio. Overall, in my own personal opinion, if I wanted a quality residential REIT, I would go with Canadian Apartment. Yes, you are paying a premium, but it's one of the ones that are growing at a faster pace and above the averages, and on top of that, it is the largest REIT of the group. Interrent is good, but they are priced very high compared to the rest, and I'd rather pick Canadian Apartment if I want a quality with decent growth. Of the remaining three, I probably wouldn't choose Killam because I'd rather pay a slightly higher premium for Canadian Apartment for much better growth. Boardwalk and Morgard are interesting as they have priced much lower and they haven't been issuing a lot of new shares. Morgard has a great yield and their historical growth has been decent but it looks like the growth is slowing down and they do have the most debt relative to their assets and size compared to the rest. Boardwalk has a lot of room to grow their dividends but they do have a lot of debt relative to their assets, slightly less than Morgard but not far off but they are the only ones that pretty much kept their shares outstanding flat for the past couple of decades, which will leave a lot of rooms for them to grow their earnings per share. And as always, if you found this video informing or if you learned something valuable, please like and share the video. I really appreciate it because making this video does take a lot of time and really helps out the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to smash the subscribe button and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.